Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. I'm sorry I haven't put out a video in a while. It's tax season for me, so I've had to focus on other priorities, like not getting my ass handed to me by my accountant and or HMRC. That's why I haven't been around. I've actually purchased a few things. I've had a few gold orders go through. I will go through them today. Um, let's move that. I would apologize about my desk, but I'm tired of doing it. So let's go through the orders. I had a Scottish dealer message me at midnight a few days ago, and he just said, I've got some coins in, they're not really working for me. I'm looking for 1070 plus post. Uh, that's probably the best I can do. Um, he said, to, I asked him, what he was going to do with that he said ah oh, i'm just going to buy some silver tap by which he means it's a bit of a running joke but he he tends to deal more in currency coins of the higher value the more collectible pieces i quite like his stuff actually i i don't really deal with it myself i i don't believe i have the knowledge or expertise to price it properly and i don't have the clientele to sell it but he ended up having some gold coins on the chopping block that he couldn't really do much with so i went away and i I worked the numbers and I said, I'll offer you 1050 posted. And he was okay with that. I said to him, I was, I'm, I'm in a business that's got very fine margins. I don't have the luxury of pricing in potential. It's just not there. When you've got bills coming in and out, the price is the price, unfortunately. And he was okay with that. He was like, no, I get it. So he ended up making a small token loss, which is a shame, but every dealer goes through that. It's not just him, I've done it myself. Sometimes you get something in that doesn't work and you let it go just to free up some cash flow and have another roll of the dice. And that's that's part of the business. So I got a 10th Krug. I got a 10th Philly. I like the Phillies, I prefer them in silver, but I am a fan of the Phillies. I love their reading. I don't know if you can see it through there. It's got a very, there we go very unique reading on the coin but I do like it the silver filly when I first got it started and I was looking at investing in silver this is the one that immediately caught my eye I was like oh that's cool you know I really like that temp filly don't often see them in gold another temp Krug don't often see these in the modern dates say modern that we're talking 13 years ago I would say I remember 2009 let's be honest I was a student and I was most likely drunk it is what it is. <laughs> I end up getting an angel. So I've got two angels actually. I've got a quarter and I've got a 20th. And one thing I didn't realize prior is they've got different wings. That's not to doubt their validity. That can easily be checked. That's not a problem. I've seen enough of these anyway. This one has testing marks. It's okay. This is why I price a certain way because you never know what something's going to be thrown up. When I see the coins in person, I can give a more accurate price. If I can't see them properly and I, I don't pick up, I, t I tend to value slightly lower. That's not to say he's being dishonest, like the coins were the coins. It, it is what it is. This, I got a kangaroo. I don't know many people who collect these. People tend to do date runs. Kangaroos are not on the top of the list to buy on a date run. I quite like them. I think they're they're quite quaint. I think they're quite nice. I know in the silver ones, there's certain one ounce kangaroos that do very well. One of them is a Reg Mombasa. The reason I know that is because before before I was a trader, before I was doing this for a living, or even before I was doing it for beer money, I bought some coins as just someone who was looking to buy silver. I ended up paying £25 for a Reg Mombasa at the time. So this would have been 20, maybe 2014, 2015. I was still, I was writing my master thesis at the time. And I got home. I didn't know how much it was worth. I, I just liked the coins. And both of them I doubled up on. So I was pretty happy about that. It was probably a precursor for me being a dealer, actually. I got that in. 
Now this is the pick of the bunch. So these have dropped slightly in value. This is a Luna 1 Perf Mint Year of the Horse 2002, 20th of an ounce, 20th of an ounce, sorry. With complimentary hair. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> this coin here is probably worth 100 pounds. These have come down in price. They, they used to be a 120, 130, 140 coin. should do well if I have to slash the price I can because of what I paid now that was the first order second order was I did a trade with a gentleman so I moved on one of my 2022 proofs and the gentleman said would you make a trade for two sovereigns and I said to him let me crunch the numbers I ended up doing two sovereigns and 10 quid I thought that was fair I was going to ask for more and I was like well actually you know by the time I worked out what I paid because I bought the 2022's new and I was like I can come down a little so these end up getting priced for free 20 a coin which it's not fantastic by end however it's given me liquidity these will most likely go in my sovereign tube to put towards my house deposit or my house so I've got a 2015 and this one is a 1902. Now for those of you who are collectors, I've got some very nice coins coming up. I'm not happy about one of them. That's not to blame the person who sold it to me. It was bought sight unseen for an attractive price. I was spitting feathers when I saw it. Let's go through them. So I end up getting, this one's not great. This is a 20 mark. It's being cleaned. 1989. I'd have to check on New Meester. It's been in jewelry most likely as well. It's not great. I might make a loss on that. If I do, I do. It's it's okay. So 20 mark gold coin, New Meester. 1989 I don't think it's rare by any stretch nine <laughs> ten million this is going to go cheap. Again, I'm probably going to make a, a loss on this. And that's a shame. It, it's okay. I didn't pay a lot of money for it. I end up getting a 2002. This is in Great Nick. This is probably a 360 coin. I'd even try and push for 370. It's a, it's a good looking coin. There's dealers out there who are paying 360. I'm pretty sure I can squeeze 370 out of it. I'm happy at that. It just randomly come up. I was like, I'll take that. This one, the dealer I bought from, they've had a while. I haven't had one of these in for a long time. These are very hard to find. So a five gilder from the Netherlands, 1912. They were only made in one year. There's a million mintage. They're very heavily faked. This one's fine. You can tell by these. I don't know what these are called. Diamonds? They're not diamonds. Diamonds with a line running through them. Now, I paid 160 for this. The mint in... It hasn't been struck very well. It's, it's heavier on one side. That's not uncommon in coins. Certainly not cause for concern. How does it flip? Is it? Nope. So it's. Yeah, there we go. I always lose track because different coins flip differently. This is probably a 180 to a 190 coin. The dealer had it up for, I think it's 185. I ended up getting it down. I just put in a cheeky off. I said, Is there anything you can do on it? It's a coin I'd certainly like to have. Don't see them. I've had maybe two of these in the past. One of them, I actually. I sniped from eBay many, many, many years ago, and I ended up getting it for just over spot. Couldn't believe it. I thought it would be fake. It wasn't. It was just, you know, when you go on eBay and something's poorly titled. It was just poorly titled. 
that's all it was the, the person selling it put it up in a really random way so there's that now the next coin this is where I'm not happy and you're gonna find out why this coin here check the date I've had a bit of a run on ponds recently now ponds five to six hundred pounds except the 1892 now what would you think the pricing would be on this well for this particular year because it's a key date you're looking at a thousand pound and up and you might think oh sean that's great like there's one there's an au58 on ma shops that's priced at 1600 pounds there was two sold at auction one of them was a ms62 that sold for 26 that's an outlier though and there was one that sold for 1300 at an MS63 and then you turn it over this has been scraped I was absolutely spitting feathers because I opened it like this and I was like oh okay that's interesting eh -eh. now I'd value this still at 600 pounds if it goes down to 500 I think it's done well even with these marks you need to realize that because it's the key date the mintage is 15,640 it is a rare coin it's not it's not like the other ones like you you get the the 95 300k the 96 200 the 97's 300 the 1900 is close to 800,000 this is pretty much 15 and a half thousand mintage and it's a real shame but it's it's still I'll still price this at 600. I most likely will never see another 1892. Not in terms of how I buy, anyway. These would have been put in collections, stored away and either graded. The, the way I buy coins, where I buy from certain avenues, you don't see key dates like this. It just doesn't really happen. So, it's a shame it could have been so much more but it is what it is i hope you've enjoyed the coins i need to finish my taxes so there might not be another video for a while but i will see you on the next one